my name is Carly King and today I'm working with the Deschutes Public Library to bring you DIY kombucha. In this video, I'm going to teach you how to make a Scooby, what a Scooby is, how to do your primary fermentation, secondary fermentation, and what to do with your Scooby after you're done brewing for a little bit and you don't know what to do with it. First, we gotta ask, what is a Scooby? It is a symbiotic culture of bacteria and yeast. So S-C-O-B-Y. Um, sometimes it's pronounced Scooby, sometimes it's Scoby. Um, I like Scooby just because I actually named one of my kombucha jars, one of my Scobies, Scoobies, Scooby-Doo. That's why I call them that. Um, so basically what it is, is it's the growth of good bacteria and yeast that eats sugars in sweet tea and produces kombucha, which has all the good uh, gut stuff that we've grown to learn and love in Central Oregon. So, thing is, Scoobies are kind of gross looking. Let me show you. So this is a scoby that I have been working on for a couple months now. Um, this is just a jar. I'll show you what to do in, in a bit. So um, I'm going to go in here and it kind of looks like, like a jellyfish almost. It's pretty gnarly looking. Um, let me see if I can bring it closer to the camera. Don't freak out. It's supposed to look that way. So, I'm going to show you how to make one. You can, if you want, go online and you can find kits on how to um, brew kombucha and they'll, br they'll mail you a Scooby. They're very expensive. And honestly, if you have a bottle of plain kombucha that you buy from the store, you can make yourself a scoby for however much that bottle cost. Super, super easy. It just takes a little bit of patience. So what you're gonna need is a mason jar. You're gonna need a cup of that store-bought kombucha. If you have a friend that brews kombucha, get some of their fer primary fermented fermented, sorry, uh, kombucha, that works awesome. If not, just buy it. Make sure that you buy plain kombucha. Don't get anything with any of the fruits or different flavors. You just want the plain old, plain old. Next, what you're gonna do is you're gonna brew about a cup of just black tea. Um, you can do that in a mug, heat up some water, steep it for a little bit, boom, good to go. An important thing to note is, and we'll talk about this a little bit later, um, a scooby is a living organism, which means that the yeast and the bacteria can die if you're not careful, which means if it's um, subject to extreme heat or extreme cold, your yeast will die and then you have to start from scratch. Anyway, so first thing when, when working with kombucha is always make sure all of your instruments are super, super clean, super sanitized. Because we are nurturing good bacteria and good yeast, we don't want to be nurturing the bad bacteria that will make you sick. A way to do that, super easy, just boil some water and put boiling water on and around anything that you use for your kombucha. We'll talk a little bit more about that in secondary fermentation. So for primary ferment, or for, to make a scooby, sorry, what you're gonna do is you're gonna get a mason jar, you're gonna put about a cup of your kombucha in. And then you're gonna add a cup of tea, just plain black tea. Then what we're gonna do is we're gonna add some sugar. White sugar is totally fine. I got the big old bag because I make a lot of kombucha. I'm gonna put in about a quarter cup, a little bit less than that. Um, as long as you have some sugar in there, it will do its thing. Sorry, you didn't get to see that. Um, it will do its thing. Next, you're gonna just stir this all up. Make sure it gets all together. This is when it's okay if your tea is a little bit warm because that will actually help the sugar um, dissolve into the liquid. all kind of mixed together all you got to do is 
Take a little coffee filter or a dishcloth, whichever one you have, doesn't really matter. Pop that bad boy on top, put a rubber band over the top so that it still has breathing air, but then no yucky things can come in. You want them to be able to breathe, which means don't put like a, a hard lid over the top. You're just gonna put this guy in a corner somewhere in your kitchen, somewhere that it gets a little bit warm, but not a lot of sunlight. Um, your SCOBY doesn't like sunlight. It can actually um, kill it. They're very temperamental that way. Um, sometimes what I'll do is I'll just put maybe a dishcloth over the top of this, an old t-shirt, basically whatever type of thing that you can keep the sun from coming in here, perfect. Put this away, forget about it for about a month. That's about how long it takes. Like I said, really easy, but it takes a little bit of patience. I made this one about two weeks ago and I'll show you kind of what it looks like. It's in a darker container, it's in a darker mason jar, that's um, how I'm keeping the sun away from it. Um, also, fun to name your Scoobies, this one's name is Gina. So, <clears throat> I'll pull it out, it's very fragile right now because it doesn't have, it's not quite thick enough. You want the Scooby to be about a quarter inch thick before you start brewing your kombucha. Um, I'm gonna pull this one out. Ooh. If I can. Oh, there she is. So, right now, I don't know if you can see this, but she's doing pretty good. She's about an eighth of an inch thick, and this is about ooh, two weeks in. Um, I'm going to leave her in there for another two weeks or so before I start brewing with her. All you got to do, put her back, drop that, but I'm just going to leave that there because that got dirty and we don't want to put bad bacteria back into it. We're going to just put her lid back on top and that's what it looks like after two weeks. Again, two weeks and, and it's been already growing that fast but you do have to be very patient. If you're not willing to be patient, just go buy a Scooby. It's not, it's not super expensive, but also why not make it? Um, so this will just go, again, into a kind of a dark cabinet. On top of your fridge works great. Um, I put it on top of my, uh, my dryer. That's awesome. And so we're just gonna put these back. And that is how you make a Scooby. So once you have your Scooby ready, it's been about a month, or you bought one, totally fine. Now we're gonna go on to how to brew kombucha. Again, very simple. Kombucha, the kombucha process is actually quite simple as long as you just have patience. Um, a lot of this is sitting and waiting, and that it's really exciting, and you just gotta be really, really, really patient with this process. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring back this guy. So, what you'll need for the primary fermentation is you're gonna need about a gallon size jar, preferably with a spout. I'll show you why the spout is important when we work on our secondary fermentation. So this has a great Scooby. Um, what you're gonna wanna do with it is you're going to put a cup of kombucha into the bottom um, I already have about a cup in there um, because I've been continuously brewing out of this. So I just leave about a cup of it in there um, as I'm brewing so that it always has a start. That gives the kombucha, the kombucha something to grow out of and grow off of. Um, if you just put all sweet tea in there, it's really hard for the SCOBY to do its magic fast. Um, brewing takes typically two weeks, um, one week if it's really warm, like summertime, it's perfect to brew kombucha. So what you're going to need is you're going to, um, you are going to boil about a gallon of water and we're going to make sweet tea. I just bought a big pack of, um, tea bags. You can buy them in bulk, super easy that way. Um, what I do is I take my, my stuff, I take seven to eight tea bags. Um, for this example, I'm only going to use five because, and I'll show you why in a second, um, when we get to the Scooby Hotel. 
one, two, three, four, five. So I just take the tea bag, unravel it. Boop, boop, boop. And I hold them all up and out like this. Then in order to keep them all kind of together, I just tie a quick knot so that they're all together. Just like, boom, just like that. And then I also take the little T labels off just because then they get wet and that's kind of gross. Um, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna have this. We're going to boil a gallon of water. Um, I already, ooh, I already boiled some water in just one of those instant electric pots. Um, so we're just going to move this out of the way. We're gonna pour our boiling water in. Awesome. Then we're going to add our tea bags. We're just gonna let this steep for a little bit. swirl and let it do its thing obviously right now I'm not brewing a whole gallon um, I'll show you why later on in the process but typically when you're making your gallon size kombucha you're going to do a little bit a cup less than a gallon so you don't need to do a full gallon because again remember we have about a cup of kombucha in there at all times um, so we're going to steep this keep in mind with this bowl with the spoon with all of these measuring cups with everything that I've been using I've been sanitizing by boiling a bunch of water pouring everything in so we've let this steep for a little bit we're going to add so we've got a gallon of, of hot water seven to eight tea bags steeping and then we're going to add a cup of sugar this is going to be the fuel for our bacteria and our yeast so what's going to happen is the yeast and the bacteria will eat the sugars in the sweet tea and turn it into kombucha. Um, so it's very important to not skip out on the amount of sugar that you use. I know that a cup of sugar seems really scary, um, but it's necessary because it's, it's the food for the kombucha. So we're going to add our sugar. And again, when it's hot is the best time to add the sugar because it helps um, it helps dissolve the sugar when your tea is warm. So we're just gonna give this a stir. Make sure everything's all dissolved. Doesn't take very long. All right. Sometimes the tea bags like to stick to your spoon, and that's okay. You just kind of shake them off if you can. Get off there, little tea bags. There we go. Awesome. So now we've got sweet tea. We have to let this cool completely to room temperature because, like I said, if we try to just pour hot tea, hot sweet tea, into our jar, it would kill our Scooby, and we don't want to do that. So what I'm gonna do to speed up this process, typically what I do is I'll brew a bunch of tea in the morning, a um, bunch of sweet tea in the morning, and I'll let it just sit out on my counter and cool as I'm you know, doing laundry or taking a class or whatever, showering, and then I'll come back, and by the time I come back a couple hours later, it's all cool and ready to go. I'm gonna speed up this process by putting it into the fridge. That always works. Give me just a second. And what I did was I brewed a gallon of sweet tea a little bit earlier. Um, it is completely cooled down, perfect. What I'm gonna do is um, go in, pull the tea bags out, and we're just gonna let that drip dry just a little bit, give it a little squeeze. I'm gonna put that to the side. I'll just put this into my compost. Plants love tea. So, you've got cool down sweet tea. 
all you gotta do is take your container with your Scooby inside, a cup of kombucha already inside, and we're just gonna pour our sweet tea right in. Looks like I made a little bit too much. That's totally okay. Um, if you do make too much, drink it if you want, or just toss it. It's not that big of a deal. All right, so I've got a gallon of kombucha getting ready to brew. All I do is pop a coffee filter and or a uh, dishcloth over the top, and you want to fill it up right to the top because um, because air can come through, um, a lot of, some of this will evaporate and so it will come down and condense a little bit and that's totally okay. So I like to fill mine up nice and tall. That way when stuff evaporates, I still get as much, um, kombucha as possible. I'm just going to put that on and then if this is your first time brewing, just throw um, like a dishcloth around it and put a rubber band around that or even just an old t-shirt, just any type of thing that's going to keep the sunlight out. What I did a couple weeks ago was I made these little um, kombucha curtains. And so basically all it is is I just um, put little ties at the top and bottom and I just go up to the top and I tie at the top. So, and then keeps the sun out and they have a fashionable little skirt. So cute. All right, so I'm just gonna put this aside. You're gonna let this sit for one week to two weeks. I like to try my kombucha after a week just to see how it tastes. It's really cool. The cool thing about kombucha is it's all up to you. You can brew it as long or as short as you want. You can make it as sweet or as sour as you want. It's all up to how you like your kombucha. So if you want your kombucha to be on the sweeter side, brew it for a week. If you like it to be a little bit sour, do two and a half weeks. Um, but I would suggest tasting it over those times. That way you don't accidentally brew it for too long and make uh, kombucha vinegar, which is basically great for cooking with, not so good to drink. So, as we're waiting our two weeks for our kombucha to become our primary fermentation, we're going to talk about our secondary fermentation. Secondary fermentation is when you add um, fruits and um, different types of berries and fruits and, and flavors, and that's what flavors your kombucha. Um, there's a couple of things we gotta talk about. Um, again, sterilizing everything that you're using because again you can still cultivate bad bacteria if you're not careful also um we have to be careful because this is the process where the kombucha gets its fizz or its carbonation so basically what's happening is we're going to add um fruit juice and berry juice or what or whatever um, flavors we decide um, we're going to add that to bottles and then we're going to put a lid on top of the bottle. What's going to happen is, is the kombucha has yeast in it, yeast and bacteria is in it. As we learned from how to make kombucha, what the yeast eats is the sugar. All fruits have natural sugars in them. That's how we get the good, the good flavor. That's why it's sweet. So what the, what the yeast is gonna do after its primary fermentation as kombucha is it's going to take the fruit sugars and it's gonna eat it and it's going to produce CO2, which is what makes the bubbles. What you have to be careful with is too much CO2 built up in pressure of a bottle, it can burst and that's what's called a booch bomb. Doesn't happen very often, you just, I'll tell you how to avoid it. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take some glass containers. You can use old wine bottles, um, growlers, crowlers, um, old kombucha bottles, basically anything that will have that's glass and has a sealable lid. So for example, this is a old kombucha bottle from Hum that I drank 
I'm gonna use it. Um, I washed it out, sent it through the dishwasher, and then before I started the video, I poured boiling water into each one of the glasses, swished it around, and then poured it out. So that makes sure that there's nothing in there that I don't want in there. I also bought a couple weeks ago these little pop top bottles. So um, it just goes like this, pops on right there, pop it off, boom. I really like these because the, it makes it so that the CO2 doesn't escape, but you do have to be very careful because you can't get, there's pop tops that are um, for decoration. So cute things to put your lemonade in while you're sipping by the poolside. These are industrial brewing bottles. So you want to buy the super thick glass, heavy duty bottles because if you go to like TJ Maxx and get four for $10 or whatever, it's very thin glass and it's not prepared to handle the stress that the CO2 is going to build up in there. So you gotta be really careful when you go to buy pop tops and different um, glasses that they're tempered glass, which means that they won't um, corrode with heat um, and that they're gonna be able to handle the pressure of the CO2. Cause the last thing you want is in the middle of the night for one of your glasses to explode, <laughs> a booch bomb. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna show you with just a kombucha bottle that I um, took the label off of. We're going to first make our um, fruit juice. So um, how you do this is you pick what you want your flavor to be. This is where you get to be creative and it's super fun. You can do, I suggest what you do is you pick um, a, like an herb or a, um, what's it called? Like a, yeah, like an herb or, and then mix it with a fruit. So one combination that I did was um, mint, watermelon, cucumber. So mint has kind of that initial nose smell and then the watermelon and the cucumber come in with a more soothing smell or a soothing taste. Um, one that I do that's really popular with my family is strawberry rhubarb, which is one that we're gonna do a, a, a little bit of a variation on today. Um, another great example would be um, lavender lemonade. So use lots of lemons and lavender and blend that up and that will make a beautiful kombucha. What else? Um, pretty much any, any type of fruit that you think would taste good together will taste good in kombucha. So a cool one that you might wanna try is pineapple guava if you happen to have those things. Um, melons are really good with more um, potent things. So um, mint melon is really, really good. Um, even doing like a cinnamon apple in the fall time would be delicious. Um, basically, like I said, if it could go in a pie, it can go in kombucha and it will be delicious. So what we're gonna do today is we're gonna do a variation of strawberry rhubarb, just because my family loves it and so I just keep brewing it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make about mm, two-ish cups of fruit. Um, keep in mind that the fruit is gonna be leaving room, which means that we're not gonna get exactly two cups of juice, as well as there's um, fibers. And um, so we won't get two cups of, of juice, but that's how much we're gonna make out of the fruit, if that makes sense. I'll explain it better, hold on. So we're gonna do strawberry and rhubarb. I've already cut up some strawberries. I'm gonna add some more. Um, you can, the cool thing about kombucha is you can use the fruit that's about to go bad in your kombucha because fruit that's about to go bad means that it has high sugar and we want high sugar and high flavor. So I'm just gonna cut up some more strawberries really quick. Um, so we're going to, basically what we're gonna do with this is if you have a juicer, awesome. Just send these through the juicer and it will do all the work for you. However, I don't have one of those. So I'm gonna use a blender. I'm basically, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna blend up all of this, the fruit together 
in um, in my blender and then I'm gonna strain it through some cheesecloth. This makes it so that all of the pulp and all of like the, the fibers don't get into your kombucha. The reason that's important is when you brew, when you put your kombucha into secondary fermentation, your scooby still grows. So you're gonna get a small little baby scooby on the top of your um, container. Don't freak out, that's totally no normal. In fact, that means you're brewing some really good sturdy kombucha. Um, your scooby will continue to grow as you brew. And I'll tell you how to, and so you're gonna get to a point where you're gonna have more scooby than you want in your container. I'll show you what to do when we get to that point. So just finished cutting up my strawberries. I have about hmm, like three cups of roughly chopped strawberries, which means that it's not actually three cups. We're just kind of eyeballing this. Again, not super scientific. This isn't baking. This is more of a cooking style. So there's variations of all of this. I went into my garden. I just got two little baby stalks of rhubarb. I think that's gonna do us just fine. You don't wanna have too much rhubarb because too much rhubarb and it's going to be super sour. Ooh. Of course now my rhubarb is too hard for my knife. Um, you're just going to rough chop this so that the blender doesn't have to do all the work. Oh man. Oh, I'm going to get a better knife. Hold on. Give me just a second. Bigger knife. Better. And we're just going to rough chop these really quick. Um, if you like a more sour kombucha, add more rhubarb. If you like a sweeter kombucha, add more strawberries, add more berries. Um, with variations that don't have a lot of sugar in them, so like my example with the lavender lemonade, if it's just lemons and lavender, it doesn't have a lot of sugar in it, which means that it doesn't give the yeast a lot to work with. When you have those, what I suggest is just add a little bit of sugar, maybe a quarter of a cup, and that will give the yeast something to work off of. And you still get that really refreshing kind of tart taste. Um, also, keep in mind that the higher sugar um, mixtures, such as strawberries, have a lot of sugar in them. Um, you've gotta be careful with how much you put into each bottle because too much sugar um, the yeast will um, react to the sugar really, really, really fast. And then your um, kombucha will be ready faster, but you have to keep an eye on it so that it doesn't explode. So I've got rhubarb and I got strawberries. I happen to have some blueberries just at my house that were about to go bad. So I'm gonna add some of these with, with um, my mixture. Again, I'm just using what I think is gonna go bad soon just because I like to use what I have. Um, this also helps inspire the flavors that I use. So if I have half a watermelon in the fridge, it's gonna be watermelon something. If I have half a pineapple in my fridge, it's gonna be pineapple something. So use what you have. If you don't have anything, then you get to go to the store and pick whatever flavors you want, which is fine and dandy. Also, if there's a flavor that you want to use, that the the say strawberries aren't in season buy them frozen it's not that big of a difference um obviously you can taste if something's fresh and if it's not but if you want strawberry rhubarb in december go for it so i'm adding some blueberries this will also give it a darker color the kombucha will have a darker color which will be really cool all right so i've got my um my fruits what i'm gonna do Push these aside and I'm going to add my blender into the mix. Ta -da! Before I started the video, I poured boiling water into this, swished it around, spit it out, just triple checking that everything I'm using is super, super sanitized. Open the lid of this bad boy and I'm just going to pour all of my stuff into the blender. I'm also going to add a little bit of water just to get this started. Um, obviously, the water's not gonna do so too much. We're just making sure that it doesn't clump up and get too chunky. So I'm gonna add, hmm, I don't know, quarter cup water. We might add more as we go, never know. I'm just gonna pour some water in there to get it going. 
This is gonna be loud, so I'm not gonna talk over it. Hold on. chunks because chunks mean that we didn't get all of the juice out and that's kind of lame um also did you like my my dance it spices things up the kombucha enjoys it you can really taste the difference okay <laughs> anyway so blended up all of my stuff it's got a really great color this is gonna be a really pretty kombucha what i'm gonna do is i'm just gonna get a smaller measuring cup and then i have this handy dandy little strainer i'm gonna put that in there and then I'm going to add a layer of cheesecloth. If you don't have cheesecloth, you can just strain it through a really thin strainer or you can use a dishcloth and that works just as well. What I'm gonna do is just take my little concoction that I made, I'm gonna pour it in there very slowly. I don't know if you can see in the camera, but it's gonna start dripping out liquid if we're lucky. If not, we're gonna have to add a step which is squeeze. What we're gonna do anyway is we're going to strain this double because um, we really don't want any pulp in our kombucha. Is it starting to do it? Nope. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to squeeze the cheesecloth and that's going to help strain as we go. Sometimes when you have high fiber, um, high fiber fruits, and vegetables, you gotta give it a little squeeze. And that's totally fine. So we're just gonna squeeze, ah, squeeze it in. Hopefully not squeeze it onto yourself like I just did. We're just gonna squeeze, squeeze, squeeze. Get all of that, wow, that shot out. Get all of the juice out. Um, if you don't want to do this by hand, all you've got to do is add more water into your mix. But keep in mind that you watered it down so that you might add a little bit more juice because it's not as highly concentrated. Ah! Oh my goodness, I'm spraying all over myself. I'm going to wash my hands really quick. This is why I wore a dark colored t-shirt. Ta-da, all clean. Uh, so for the purpose of my video, this is probably gonna be enough. I'm gonna just take my little knife. I'm just gonna let it filter out just a little bit more. This is the part that takes the longest. It really does, especially if you don't have a juicer. If you have a juicer, use that. Um, again, I don't have it, so this takes a little bit extra time. Mm -hmm. All right, so that's good. I'm gonna clean up my workstation real quick. I'm gonna rinse this out and I'm gonna I'm going to filter this one more time. Just flip the, uh, the strainer over so that all of the fibers get out of it. I'm gonna clean this up just so that it looks pretty for you. Throw that in the sink. Throw this into my compost bucket. All right, I'm gonna take this one. We're gonna take these out. Um, I'm going to strain this back into this. And this is just making sure that there's no extra fibers again. And you can see having to kind of swirl it because there were fibers left over. Doo, doo, doo. All right, so we've got about, about a third of a cup, a little bit less than that. And that was just a one little pour. Theoretically, we're gonna, we would do all of this. 
But for the purpose of the video, I don't need to do that with you guys. I can do that later. All right, so finally, we're getting to the cool stuff. So I'm gonna steal one of my little pop tops. Um, these are about 28 to 30 ounces, I think. Um, the bigger the container, the more juice goes in. The smaller the container, the less juice goes in. So I'm gonna put about three to four tablespoons of juice into this one. If I were to be using my little baby hum, I'd probably put one in there. So um, again, also it will depend on how flavorful you want it to be, how mellow you want it to be. It all depends on the fruits that you use. Um, so don't be like, oh, well, Carly said I could only put four tablespoons in. If you've got more, eh, throw it in. Again, all experiments, super non-scientific. You got this. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab a little tablespoon and I'm gonna grab a, fill or a funnel really quick. Again, before I sanitized all of this. Funnel just helps me aim better. Um, and then I'm gonna use a tablespoon just so that I know roughly how much I'm putting in there. Um, so we've got, we're gonna pour, we've got one tablespoon. Oh, looks like we've got two tablespoons. Probably got three in there. One more. Oh yeah, baby. And then some change. I'm just gonna pour that in. All right. Doop, doop, doop. All right, so we've got about three-ish tablespoons in there. What we're gonna do is we're gonna walk over to, these are my big um, brewing. So what I'll show you is this is just like a bigger version of what we've got. This is all kombucha. We've got a scooby at the top. And so what I'm gonna do is this is why I said to get a, um, a container with a little spout because this makes our process so much easier because all I've gotta do instead of having to take the scooby out, having to set it out into a sanitized bowl, having to take sanitize another measuring cup, have to take the measuring cup, have to pour it out, blah, 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 blah. All I gotta do is turn. Ta -da! And look, we're filling up our booch. I like to fill it up a couple of inches and then I like to give it a little swirl. That way all the juice is getting in with the kombucha. Nice. That's more. And then what you're gonna wanna do is fill it up till just about the thought, like the neck turns in. So right about, right about there, maybe a little bit more. Okay, so by doing this, it allows um, CO2 to fill up in the neck of the bottle and it makes it so that your kombucha is a little bit more carbonated, which is really nice. So all I've got to do now that I've gotten full up, got some great juice in there, just going to pop the top back on. Now you're going to have to wait just a little bit longer. It's so close. That's how you're going to get the good carbonation. I let this sit for two to three days and then it should be good to go. So, how to prevent a booch bomb. Let this sit for two to three days and then check the carbonation. This is called burping your booch. <laughs> so what you do in order to do that is you wait a couple days, you're like, oh, you know, I don't know. And then you just <coughs> pop it. If it, you know you've got really carbonated kombucha. If it just goes up, it's probably not ready yet put it back on, let it wait. I put all of my kombucha together, so my big jugs, I just leave on my dryer. I put these on my dryer. I put my growing my scoobies just on my dryer, and I just leave it all in one spot so that when I walk past it after I do laundry, I go, oh, I need to burp my bottles. Once you have your kombucha to the carbonation level that you want, all you've gotta do is stick these in the fridge, and then that will stop the yeast from going. Yeast don't like hot and yeast don't like cold. So when you cool it down, the yeast stop working as fast and then you have awesome kombucha just ready to go in your fridge. Ta-da! Another thing I would do, um, especially when you start making a lot, is I put a label 
I just remind myself, hey, this is strawberry blueberry rhubarb, and then I put the date just so I don't forget, um, because I do. And that is how you make, that's how you put it into secondary fermentation. Really quickly, if say, you have been brewing for a while, you're like, oh, I don't really wanna do this anymore. Or you're going on a long vacation, you're gonna be gone for a month or longer. What you're gonna to wanna to do is put your Scoobies into a Scooby hotel. So I'm gonna show you how to do that really quick. Um, so remember that tea that we made earlier? We're gonna bring that back out. So, hopefully, I'll show you a secret if you're impatient. So it's pretty, it's still pretty warm. Almost there. We're gonna pull the tea bags out just because we don't need those anymore. And then here's my little secret. You throw an ice cube in. Give me just a second. We've got big ice cubes in this household, but you just throw an ice cube in, you stir it, and that will cool it down just to the temperature that you want. This is in case you really want to make it right away. It does water it down just a little bit, but not enough where you're going to notice. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to throw some of this in there and cool this down. In the meantime, so what you do when you put it into a Scooby Hotel is you're basically just putting it so that it can do its thing for a while um, without you having to brew more kombucha, swap it out, do the whole thing. So if you're going on like a vacation or if you're gonna be gone for like a month and, or you just don't wanna brew for a month, if you're just, you're like, eh, don't really wanna do it right now. This is how you do this. Also, when you, your Scooby on your, um, on your container gets too thick, what you can do is you can slowly kind of split it in half and you can save another Scooby for later. So this is if you want to do some experimenting. So maybe green tea kombucha, maybe hibiscus kombucha. Um, I have a friend who tried to brew coffee kombucha. I haven't tried it, so I don't know if it's good or not, but something fun to try. When you have multiple Scoobies, you can do different things with it. You can experiment, you can try different ferment styles and all this type of stuff. So you need a Scooby hotel so that you have on hand Scoobies or if you just don't want to do it for a while. So that's probably ready to go. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna wash my hands again so I know that they're nice and clean. And I'm going to take my Scoobies that are up in here and I'm gonna put them into this container. Typically what I want to do is put your container like back into the gallon size with a lid. Um, but I don't have one of those right now. So I'm just gonna show you how to do it in this container and I'm just gonna put like a dishcloth over the top of the rubber band and that's gonna work just fine. As long as you're using glass, you're good to go. All right, so I'm gonna wash my hands really quick. Just wanna make sure everything's nice and clean. And then, I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring these over so that I can show you. All right, so what you're gonna wanna do is brew less than a gallon because all you need is for the Scoobies to just breach the top. So it doesn't need to be a lot of sweet tea. But again, all we did was just make sweet tea, not a big deal. We're also gonna put about a cup of kombucha back into this, just like you were brewing, um, like, just like how we were brewing our primary fermentation kombucha, um, that's what you're gonna do. What's gonna happen though, is when you leave it for long enough, what I said, like I said previously, is it's going to make kombucha vinegar, which great for cooking with. So don't worry about the, like the Scooby dying or anything, it's gonna be fine. As long as this is, I think it's gonna be fine. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take the top off of this. Maybe untie her. There we go. There we go. And I'm just going to take the Scooby out of the container. Ooh, see she's pretty old, so I could probably split her if I wanted to. But look at how thick she is. 
See how she has like, this was the primary Scooby that I made. This was the first disc. And then because I put her into a bigger jar, she grew larger and she's nice and thick. And if you see, I don't know if you can see this, but there's like these little brown bits. Some people freak out, think that that's mold. Don't freak out. It's actually really hard to get your Scooby to mold. Um, this is actually quite healthy Scooby. Beautiful. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna pop her into the tea. Perfect. And then I'm gonna get the next one. I'm gonna wash my hands really quick. Move her over. Oh, she's heavy. Bring this one over. Oh, we're just gonna do the same thing. And then you can leave this for up to a month. If you think that you're not gonna brew for longer than about a month, my suggestion is, so like a lot of people will brew kombucha over the summer because it's a fun summer drink, but they don't really wanna deal with it in the winter. My suggestion is, is if you only wanna brew in the summer, just make a new Scooby in the spring and then you'll be ready to go in the summer. And then the end of summer, fall rolls around and you're kind of done brewing kombucha. Just stick your, um, your Scooby into the compost and your plants will love you. If you don't have a compost, stick it in the trash. There's ways that you can eat the Scooby, but that kind of grosses me out a little bit. Pinterest it if you're interested. I think they make like Scooby jerky. That sounds really gross to me. Anyway, so, ooh, pull her out. Oh, she's doing so good. Woo! See how she's already kind of splitting off right here? That is so good. And she is real thick. So she's even thicker and our other one. And look how there's like multiple layers almost of the Scooby. I could pull her apart and put this into a Scooby hotel and keep brewing. Like I could put, put this in half and she'd be doing great. Um, also, if you start brewing and your friend's interested, give them a Scooby. You're making them anyway. Might as well share the love. So we're just gonna put this oh, right on top and then wash your hands. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to get a little linen. And I'm going to put this over the top. And typically I would put a rubber band, but I don't have one big enough. So I'm just going to kind of twist and tuck. And then you can leave this where you were brewing your kombucha originally. And this can last for up to a month. And, um, and then when you're ready to brew again, just pour out the excess liquid. Grab yourself a bottle of plain kombucha. Pour that in get the process starting again, and it's just as easy as that. This is how to start kombucha start to finish. We made a Scooby. We learned how to do primary fermentation. We learned how to bottle and prevent booch bombs. And we even know how to put our Scoobies away if we don't wanna be brewing as much as we have been. These are all of the steps that you're gonna need for the beginning of your kombucha journey. This is not a guide of just like, these are the laws. As especially, or except for um, sanitizing everything. That is, a, that is a hard, fast law. But everything that I've taught you, you can tweak. So if you brew and you didn't like how potent it was, use a mixture of tea and water, like we watered down with our ice cubes. If, say, you didn't like that I used strawberry and blueberries, use raspberries and blackberries. Basically, just use what you've got and try a lot of different things and you'll be super happy. So this was how I do all of my things. Thank you so much.